Hey guys, welcome to episode number 158 of the Gay Mom Girlfriend podcast, where today I am bringing you Lee Carraher. She is the founder and CEO of Double Forte, which is an incredible PR and communications company. One of the first questions uh, you're going to hear me ask in the podcast is why did you start this business? Because you guys know how much I love that question. Like, how did you put together your experience, your expertise, um, and your talents to create your business? And hers really kind of hit near and dear to me because her mother was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. And she said, I'm going to go be with my mom. And that hit me really hard because that's what my stepmother was diagnosed with. And I remember having that exact same feeling of like, nothing else matters, but that I can be with this person. And at the same time, we have to make money. Like, we can't just all stop working when life happens. So how can I create this in a new way? And that's sort of how she went about this. It's just so interesting. I really hope that you listen to what she says about communication. I went right at it with her. Like, what are the biggest mistakes people make in communication? What do you think people think communication is? She makes it so much fun. Um, and she's just got so much energy and so much life. And as she talks about how she believes age is now her superpower, I think she's right. And I think there's something really cool, especially for women, like this anti-aging movement and don't be old and like all the things we're supposed to do and why don't you retire? And not that all of us are up against that by any stretch of the imagination, but it's out there. Do you know what I mean? It's out, the conversation's out there and people are having it. And I think we all know at some point we're going to have to have it too. So this idea that we get to take that back, that we get to reclaim that for ourselves, I think is really important. So I hope you listen for that. And if there's anything that you personally are up against right now, any like societal conversation or communication coming into you that you aren't agreeing with, you're not aligning with, I think today's episode will help sort of ignite a new spark in you to be able to communicate out in a way that matters to you, to be able to decide and declare what you think is important without any problem in communicating that, right? So I really feel like that's what Lee gave us in this episode today. I hope you love it. Pop in those earphones and let's get to it. Lee, welcome to the Game on Girlfriend podcast. Sarah, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, of course, of course. So can you tell us a little bit about why you do what you do? My mother got sick. And I lived really? in California at the time. My parents lived in Wisconsin um, and I need, and she was given four months to live and I was going to oh be God. with my mom. And I realized, well, I got to keep, you know, a roof over our head. I better start my own farm. And so that was the reason I started Double Forte was to do what I like to do in a way that I could do it and also be just present with my family. I built my business so I can have a life, right? Mm. That mm -hmm. is why I built my business. It is, we are not optimized for money. We're not up, we're obviously we have a profit, no margin, no mission, but we are, you know, I used to make more on the salary in my last job. But the fact that I'm measuring for, I'm measuring my quality of life now and I built the business for quality of life. So seven habits is so important because I think it was the first work-life balance book. Um, like talking about all the roles you have and women usually have more roles than men, except in my house, I think each of these buckets is a, is a, is a role. Yes. So I use the seven habits every, every day. That's amazing. And you guys, we're going to link to that book underneath. I love communication so much, right? You have built this business, your career, your life around the ability to communicate clearly. If you cannot communicate, you could not have a business. If you cannot communicate, you cannot have a relationship. Mm. If you cannot be, you know, if you can't communicate, your life is shit. Excuse my language. Because all it is is disappointments and uh, miscommunication. And it's so much work to be in miscommunication with everything. Uh, when you are a good communicator, not only are you good at giving direction, you are good at taking direction, right? So you're surrounded by people who can take direction and understand their role and, and how they impact other people, even in a crisis. It's a friction-free world because uh, everyone knows what they're supposed to do. Everyone knows why they're there. Everyone knows what the end result we want is. Everyone knows what to do when we hit a hiccup. When you don't know those things because they haven't been communicated to you, Interesting. It's just disastrous. Everything you do speaks. Um, and you need to really, everyone needs to know that they are a huge vessel of that. And, and um, you're your own platform now. 
you've always always been your own platform, but now you actually have recognition for yourself as your own platform. So everything you do speaks. If you're silent when you shouldn't be, that speaks. If you, uh, you know, you say it with a tone that is, you know, condescending, that speaks. People now want to understand who they're purchasing from, who they're in business with, who they yeah. spend, choose to spend their time with, who they choose to watch for entertainment. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't align with them because those people have not communicated well, or they've communicated something that is just against what that you you think there's no reason to spend your time or your money in something that you don't align with. I wanted to ask you, what do you think kind of the most common mistake is people make in mm-hmm. communications? Assuming that's the, you know, we assume that you understood what I said. We assume that we uh, believe the same thing about a word. We assume that our words mean the same thing to the person listening as they do to us. And they do not. And they do not. Okay. So assuming that what what our definitions are is what everybody's definitions are. Right. Is that like yeah. a great, okay. Mm-hmm. So how do we deal with that? Say we're having a basic conversation with somebody and we're worried that maybe we are having different definitions. What's the best way to remedy that? So one is say it back to me. Say what you think I said back to me. Uh, and if there's a misunderstanding of, of, of vocabulary, it will come back. If I'm talking to someone in from England, like when they say, um, uh, quite right. It's quite good. Um, they don't mean it's quite good. <laughs> no, it's quite good. They actually mean <laughs> not really that great. When we say quite good, we mean, Oh, that's awesome. Right. right. So you also right. have to know who you're talking to. I think one of the things I do, and forgive me, I do this with my children. Actually, I'll say, can you tell me what I just said? Um, and sometimes they'll parrot it back and then I'll say, okay, but what does that mean to you? And I find it just, it just alleviates so much stress, but I love really using this inside of, of a work environment as well. Cause it is so easy for us. We all just get in our own groove and we're just doing what we're doing. And then we like totally space out and don't recognize the person we're talking to has no idea what's going on. And we've talked a little bit about generational differences, those sorts of things. Mm-hmm. And I know you, you sort of feel now that, um, your age is your superpower. Can you talk about that a yes. little bit? Yes, I can. So I am 58. Um, and in my plan of my life, I imagined that I would be done working at 55. And uh, that's not happening. For a lot of reasons, I have a special needs child, we move <laughs> the economy, you know, everything, right? So um, this summer, I was sort of in a funk. I was like, what am I going to do? My agency just turned 20. I don't know. Is anyone ever going to listen to me ever again? Blah, 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 blah. Several friends had an intervention with me separately, separate interventions with me, where they basically slapped me side up the head, upside the head, and said, Um, I just like to point out, Lee, that you had four calls that you've never had before because they want your expertise. And you keep getting these calls, people want to know what you think. And I said, You have been you've you have been through so much. You have handled so many big things. You've handled little things, big things, um, been involved with so many big companies and important companies and companies that you help sell and go public and buy and merge. Who doesn't want that in, you know? Age is your superpower because you've been through so much. Mm -hmm. So um, I've decided that age is my superpower and I'm going to live into it. And then literally I decide that I wrote it down on a piece of paper. It's on my computer. Age is my superpower. You know, I love the mantra. It's not too late for pretty much everything. You know, I mean, no matter what it is, we wish, we'll wish we'd started today, three weeks from now, right? It doesn't matter what it is, but also, you know, in, in the heart of our lives, you know, That's you're right. reminding me of something. It's interesting. My dad said this to me many years ago. Um, I think he had just turned 65. And he said, you know, I have never been this wise. I've never had so much information. And it's just at the time where people tell us to turn it down. Right. And he said, it's just, it's just not aligned properly. It's it, not. This is when I have the most to give. And I just thought that was so interesting. And it sounds a lot like what you're saying in that as we age, every moment of experience, every moment of interaction and communication with other people is mm-hmm. something that we can use to contribute. And I think that's absolutely correct. Absolutely. Can you, and I think it's a um, the most important piece, though, of that age is your superpower is being relevant because you're not just relevant because you knew something, you're relevant because you can apply it. So- um, 
you know, tell me about the old days. Really, no one wants to hear about the old. You need to be able to apply what you know to the current situation. So that's about being relevant. Um, and so how are you relevant? You know, um, I've had to fire people who, and it sounds so terrible, I'm going to let them go, because they didn't want to evolve how they communicated. Like, this is the way I've always done it, Lee, and now there's this social media thing, and I don't want to do that. I'm like, you don't right. have a choice. You don't have a choice. If you're going to be in this career, you need to do that. Learning, learning, learning. It's interesting with age too, that I think you're kind of breaking up this myth a little bit. There can also be the perception that one is set in their ways and that's it, right? And I think um, not only are we working longer and we're doing more and we're applying our expertise and our experience in different ways, I think we've also learned how to be more adaptable um, and more having like that you know, elasticity in our brain and all those things that we've all been studying lately and how the brain evolves and, and can continue to remain elastic if we study. We get to redefine this a little bit now. And, and again, yeah. it goes to, you know, your entire area of expertise, which is this all matters mm -hmm. based on how we communicate about it, right? Like yeah. how we just, how we decide as society and as women, especially, right. Cause we get so great. As women, absolutely. Looks right? Like how we decide aging will or will mm -hmm. not work inside of our lives. What will happen? What won't happen? Like you said, we get to make these yeah. decisions, um, but then also communicating about them, not just accepting the status quo, but communicating out about what we believe is acceptable, what we believe we're capable of, how malleable we are, right? And what we can apply based on everything that we know. I think this is such a critical conversation um, and just say to that it isn't ever too late. It's never too late to learn something new, but it's also never too late to learn how to communicate better. And it's never too late to communicate at all, right? There's always more we can be communicating about, right? Part of the thing about being a great communicator is knowing yourself as well as you can, hmm. right? So um, I, you know, part of learning is understanding what you're good at, what you're bad at, what what you lean it should lean into, mm -hmm. what you should like stay away from. Yeah. Um, uh, how you react in certain situations, all this kind of stuff. And so um, in my company, we do a lot of type indicators just so that people can know themselves better and our teammates can know more about each other, right? So I'm a big E, you know, on the Myers-Briggs, I'm like, it couldn't get any more E than me. You can't get any more N or F than me. And then the P is like 60%. So- Can you define that way, just in case somebody doesn't sure, know, can ENFP, you define those? Is extrovert, intuitive, uh, feeling- perceiver. Um, and there are 16 types in the MBTI. And then in the Enneagram, which is actually one that I appreciate more now, uh, there are nine types and uh, you get you get a number assigned. In the DISC profile, which is a driver, um, a driver, I can never remember what it is, but it's, are you a driver, you're influential, um, uh, strategic and commanding, something like that. Um, uh, those kinds of things in the, there's another type indicator that is what's your appreciation language? Um, because we all like to be appreciated, but my appreciation, like how I receive appreciation and understand it may not be the same as you. Um, there's just lots of these things. So I, I mean, I believe in these things because, you know, the, no one's ever, none of them are all perfect, but when I go into, if I'm in conflict with someone, I read their, pro, I read their profile first and I read my profile. I'm like, oh, well, no wonder in a conflict, like in a, in a crisis, I go into command mode. I'm like, I know what to do. Do not F with me. Just do what I say. Other people are like, go into a clamshell and you, you know, but that's their type. That's what they're, that's, that's what they're born with. Right. Uh, and then when you know people's different types, if you know your own type, you know what's triggering for you, which is, you know, relatively new word. And you know, oh, you know what? I need a break. I'm going to take a break and then I'm going to come back and talk to you about this. And then I'll be, in, I'll be in a position to listen. Because right now I'm not in a position to listen and you will not be happy with the outcome. But I'm going to go away. I'm going to get grounded and I'm going to come back. Because I know if I am hyped up, do, don't F with me, man. Because I'll take you down. It won't be pretty. Uh there'll be carnage. That self-knowledge is so important. And so important. once again, the ability to communicate about it and say, listen, yeah. you're totally doing whatever you're doing. That's great. I'm going to yeah. like go nuts if we keep doing this. So this let me not do that. And let's see in this book, this. the five languages of appreciation in the workplace. No, I haven't. The same the guys who've done the, the love languages. 
Oh, great. So important. Um, you know, we are a high celebration company. Um, you know, and let me, let me shout out to Trisha. She did such a great, you know, and then we, we did this, right? She could care less. She cringes when she's brought up like in that kind of way, what she wants you to do. is just write her a note privately. Put it in the I note. see. So right? Cause like for some people that might be embarrassing. And then for the other person, that's like the best right. thing you could do. Right. And the other people are, um, acts of service. Like, just tell me, t- ask me how I can, you can help me. That's what I want you to do. I love you know? that. Can you tell me the name of that book again? Just sure, so everybody grabs five it. Five languages of appreciation in the workplace. Five languages of appreciation in the workplace. Love. Okay. Well, you guys, we're going to link to that under this video or in the show notes. If you're listening, Lee, this has just been so much fun talking to you. I love when I get to talk to other entrepreneurs. Lee, if somebody has just loved learning from you today, where can they find you? Very easy to find. My name is Lee Carraher, C-A-R-A-H-E-R-L-E-E, the male version. Uh, <laughs> and uh, double forte is double hyphen forte.com, Lee Carraher.com. At, and I'm Lee Carraher on Twitter, on Instagram, on in, and Facebook and LinkedIn. So got it. And you guys, we're going to link to all of those in the show notes or underneath this video. Lee, thank you so much for spending some time with the girlfriends today. We so appreciate you. And thank you for helping the rest of the world communicate better. Oh, thank you. Girlfriends are my favorite thing. So it's been such a joy to be with you. 